Here we go then, ladies and gentlemen, season number 10 of this West Indies rebuild on Cricket Captain 2024. We had a good last year. 2022, a 4-5 record, one of our better years. Uh, we won one against Australia, got swiped by swiped. We got hammered by India, let's be honest. Uh, but good wins against Zimbabwe and previously against Afghanistan. But now's the time where we're starting to see a little bit of change with the quality of players coming through. We're talking about these three-day three day records. When are we going to start seeing people coming through? And we're going to start making some big changes. Sonny Mabair. Moabir. 888 runs at an average of 63 with four centuries. That, looking at players over the course of the last three calendar years, is an exceptional record. He does it at a high strike rate and he also has a great second team average. Solomon's going to come back into the team. He is more than earning his stripes. Two excellent years in domestic cricket. Also, Wickham, who we discarded quite early, is in great form the last two years. The average wave is just slowly starting to go in the right direction. And I think it's time to start making some calls on some of these players. Samaru has now played 15 games in averaging 36 as opening alongside Louis, who is in an immense downturn, but is going to remain at the top of the... I really want to get... Action Bo Jackson into the team. He is lighting up domestic cricket. An average of 40. Domestic first class average of 42. Last year average 38. 45 the year before that. And sits very, very high on the course of the last three seasons uh, from an average perspective. Peters, once again, is going to go from this team. Great first class average, but he's done nothing. 150 from 32 innings. It is a five-star rated Sri Lanka team. And the changes we're going to make is Griffiths is going to move up to four. He's averaging 40 from 19 games. Really happy with what he's done. Belgrave's going to hold on to three somehow, but he was much better uh, this year. Last year, he averaged 33. Okay, he wasn't that much better. Uh, Moabir is a first-class number five, so he's coming in to play in that role. Averaging 63. Like, there could be something there. It could be too soon. Solomon's coming in. He's going to bat at seven. He's a first-class number five. Hilton drops down one. First-class number three, batting down at number six. He's been given a lot of rope, Hilton. Averaged 26 last year. One century kind of saved his career a little bit. And with the ball, there's no change. Ned's the spinner. So we're starting off. We've got a bit of Sri Lanka. We've got two series against England going on. And we really, desperately, need to have a really good start with the bat. Just like that Samaru. Edge it away. All in the first over. Shots galore. That's such a West Indies innings. 172 all out. We're not going to change. Everyone makes double digits, which is good. Uh, Belgrave 32 and out. That's a Belgrave thing to do. Louis 26. Solomon 35 not out. Like It's just us all over. But all these guys coming in, they're getting 15 tests. We're going to see what they've got. It's only a 97-run lead. Gamroot goes big with 7 for 75. One catchable shot in there, but blows away the tail. His form for us has been very good. We have meaningful contributions. That famous win against Australia that no one else is going to remember except me. Uh, but he's closing in on 250 wickets. They're going to need a few to win. We get 3-2-2. They need 2-2-6 to win. Belgrave starts the season red hot, goes and pegs a century. Six played and missed in there. It is doing bits out there, but test match century number six. Love to see a bit of that. Uh, good contributions at four and five. Four and five hole has been the ones where we've just kind of fallen away the most. Uh, Moabir, that's a decent first test, 17 and 42. But look at the first class form. It's absolutely outstanding. Uh, what was amazing, actually, looking at that form, there's a 90, a 68, a 51 in there. It's not all just centuries. 46 for Solomon on debut as well, 35 and 46 for him. Happy with that. It's Sri Lanka's game to lose. <gasps> Thorne's got a hat trick. He's gone bang, bang, bang. Silver goes. Uh, Anagama goes and Madushka goes. All of them. It's a hat trick of clean bowl. That's the hat trick ball. Why did we start with that? I don't know. It's just a huge moment. Second hat trick of the save for us. What a moment. The ball is hooping a little bit. But it's uneven bounce. We've got them five down. We've got a chance of winning. They need 99 to win. Oh, it's a famous victory. Gamroot gets four. Thorn 5, Gamroop 11 in the game, Belgrave takes man of the match, we've blown him away for 183, 
we've won a test match. Not just any test match. We've won a test match against the team ranked seventh in the world. Okay, it was about eight episodes ago. They was ranked number two on getting carried away, but still a huge victory. Seeming dicks. It's definitely uh, definitely worked out for us. Apologies for the pronunciation of dick. What have we got away? Here we go. It's going to be a bowler's condition again because that's what we've picked and we've won the toss and batting. What even is this team? 419. We're living the dream. Belgrave with 142. He got dropped. I don't care. Peppering the offside. Goes back to back centuries. Oh, this is what we've wanted for so long. This was the guy that started off averaging near 40. He's now up to a 34 average. Seven centuries. Hilton scores a century as well. Huge century for him. He did score one and kind of broke out a bit of a funk that he was in. Now averaging 32.5. But good knocks. Meaningful contributions from the top. We'll be leaving you West Indies. We're turning a corner with youth and a world-class bowling attack. Ned is back to his best with a 5 for 52 here. Wicket spread around at Rangatunga. Not Anajunga Rangatunga. Uh, Akila Rangatunga. He's 26 years old. Century number 12, averaging 45. Like most players in the game, the average in mid-40s. Just as the aren't. Okay, they need 4, 5, 6 to win. We score 3, 12. Uh, Moa Beer has come in and looks like the real deal. 91 here off 197. Two sixes to his name. Um, that's a great start to his career. Really two fine test matches. Griffiths with a nice made 50. His form may be just starting to drop off the cliff a little bit, but I still believe he could be the guy to average 44. A Solomon, again, really consistent series. Couple of 46s in here, batting at 7. Uh, they need a lot to win on a deck that is doing bits. What a win. We've done it. A series victory against Sri Lanka. Um, Madushka scores 100 off 166. Never thought they were going to win, but I did think for a moment, think, ooh, they might just hang on here. Uh, but we have beat them 2-0 in a series where Belgrave's averaged 72. Moa Beers come in. Solomon's come in. Both averaged over 40. Griffith's 39. Hilton's had a step up to averaging 38. I like that. And then with the ball, we saw our usual consistency. It's a really big moment. It may just be the biggest turning point of the series so far. New Zealand go and win the Test World Championship. They're going to take a bit of that. Go and beat India by four wickets in the final. Chasing 178 for six. Dawes comes up with 76. Tennyson, 60. But we have got five of the biggest test matches. We've got the red carpet. We're in England. Ranked number five in the world. We've got the number one, two and three test bowler in the world at the moment. Thorne, Ned and Gamroot. Quite clearly we don't have the number one best batter. But Belgrave is up to 30. Don't know. I don't think you always see players improving the catching during the series or during the squad selection. I've tried to put a few on technique to see if that's going to make any difference. But essentially, we are not changing our team. We're going in with the team that just beat Sri Lanka, baby. Won the toss. Might be a bit in it for the seamers later, but we've got to have a good start with the bat. They've got some good players in this. Malik and Wales and Hind. Well, Malik and Wales have scored a lot of runs against us. Uh, but with the ball, surely this is an opportunity. East is dangerous. He's taken plenty of wickets, but Wood, Eves and Good might give us a chance. We've got a tail that wagged. Samru was 71, Louis 58, Belgrave 55. We were 3 for 150, 2 for 157 at one stage. Had a mini collapse with Griffiths and Hilton going, but Gamroop 47. Look at that, he's got two test match 50s to his name, averaging 14, number 6 all-rounder in the world. Thorne and Anderson added value down the order as well. We also got hold of East. East is East, baby. 417 wickets at 29.7. But his economy rate, he can go. Oh, my days. We have got a chance against England. They're 253. Gamroot got Wales, which was massive. Holstead scored runs against us before. He's got a career average of 40 with 13 centuries to his name. Uh, Darcy, well, he scored 53. He's got 17 centuries and an average of 47. So their batting is way superior. But our bowling feels like... Right, with 2-2-6 all out, Samaru 
He's had a good game. 71 and 72. Uh, but I was thinking here, I was like, if everyone gets 20, we're going to end up giving them 350 to win. And that's what happened. Moabir with 47 as well. Uh, very good start to his test career. They're going to need 345. The pitch isn't outrageous. It's day three, session three. It looks a great day for batting the next day. We've got to get a couple of early pegs. Could it be huge? We've just got been the final delivery before the end of day three. Oh, my days with one. I thought they were going to do it. They're looking good. Darcy, 95. Halstead with 53. Wales on 60. But we went bang, bang, bang right at the end. What a fine performance from the team. We find ourselves... We've turned a corner. We took Anderson here. He was here. Bang, bang. Anderson with the wickets. Took the new ball. Thorne picked up a couple very, very quickly. This is quite incredible. 1-0 up against England. No changes to our team. We're happy with what we're doing. Uh, they bring in Tetley, who's averaging 113, which is different. We win the toss. We're going to bat again. Now, that was bad. 1-4-5 all out. Uh, so Samaru top scores again. Third innings on the trot for him. But, uh, yeah, we, we've been knocked out there. Tetley, two for 16 as well. Like, hey, how do you want to change your career around from 44 games? 44 matches? Really? No, 44 overs. Now we're a long way behind. They get 310. All thanks to Zach Crawley recalled into the team. 35 years old, 139 tests. 10,000 test runs for Zach Crawley in 20 centuries. Let that sink in. Bates ran out for 99. Um, we struggled. We struggled for control. They scored fast. We did pull it back, uh, but their run rate, I thought, was very, very good throughout. Lose by eight wickets. We get 229. Griffiths, 84. Solomon, 48. Uh, but more of the same, we just we really struggled to put runs on the board. And it only left him 66 to go. So, one apiece, that was more like what we're used to. Not going to budge on this lineup though. I'm sticking with them. Unfortunately, there we won the toss. This time we've lost the toss and it's doing heaps. Honestly, under my breath, sometimes I swear playing this game. It was going to be difficult, but again, we had a good start. Samaru with 75. He's in some great form at the moment. Averaging 36 from 20 games. I'm, I'm happy with what I'm seeing. But Belgrave Griffiths got in, got out, and the rest of them got blown out by East. And they take 110 run lead. They only score 315. Halstead is a great player against us. Uh, he's having a good series, scoring plenty of runs. We're not quite getting the breakthrough at the top of the order like we normally do. This batting. 137 all out. There are no words. We take two with us, that's all. We're in the toss in the fourth test. Can we stay in the series? Not with batting like that. 2 2 1. Belgrave 89. He threw away a century. Uh, 1 3 4 5. Six bowlers. Bashir's good. Ahmed's good. Uh, and unfortunately, we're just not quite as good with the bat. Uh, this, this test is gone. They get 4 3 4. Top order for them is so, so good. Halstead with yet another 50. Look at that. He, he averages 40. And then Darcy comes in. He averages 48. He scores 80. Malik comes in, he averages 50, he scores 99, Wales scores 45, we're behind the 8 ball, we're almost on 9 ball. Lose by Ninnins and 21, uh, usual, tail ends, blown out of the water, uh, Griffiths 77, Samaru 44, but pff, what can you do, Rian Ahmed's a machine on the game and he's only got 285 wickets. To be fair, I'm pretty happy that we won 1 to be honest, I would have taken that at the start. Uh, bowlers are struggling a little bit as well. Uh, if we look at Anderson, he's averaging 33. Gamroop's averaging 40 in this series. The bowling has been the stability that's held us together. But we've got a pitch that is going to turn heaps. Don't need to tell me two spinners. Gives us the extra bat of Bishop. That is so frustrating again. We do well here. And actually, we were like 5 for 275 at the end of day one. And we were bowled out for 304 within a matter of hours um there was two overs here back to back where griffiths went and hilton went and that pretty much changed the game no one's going to believe this when i tell you that two spinners has worked in england bates was 60 but gamroop and thorn get some wickets early doors ned and bishop take five and 28 overs and gives us a lead of 129 on a pitch that is not going to get any easier Okay, don't worry, lads. Just lose the last three, four wickets. Three wickets. 
didn't score a run. Rian Ahmed with six. Griffiths does well, 61. Samaru again. He's turned into the consistent machine after averaging 20 for so long. But it does mean they're going to need 3-2-9 to win on a pitch that is difficult. But day four looks the best batting day of the lot. We've only gone and thrashed them. Thorn, six for 66. Bowls, 20 overs. And we get three with the spinners. And overall, right, the batting has been better. But we've just gone three and two, two and three in England. England have battered us pillar to post. The beat is 2-1, 3-1, 5-0 the last time we played them. I am over the moon with that. 69 points. But also, Samaru, 500 runs in England. That is an outstanding achievement. Griffiths, 38. Okay, the rest is really poor. But two players have held us together enough to win two tests against England. It goes to show we're just like one top six star away from really, really competing. Bishop was good when he came in. Gamroot uh, Gam Gam wasn't as good as normal, but he has those series. Anderson averaging 33 slightly off. But Thorne, Ned, exquisite. Oh my days, look at us. It's a new Test World Championship, but look at us. I tell you what, if anything makes you feel like... The corner may be in sight. It's results like that 3-2 away. Maybe we could be a mid middle tier sort of test team. Can we back it up against Ireland? Ireland in the West Indies. It's wanting us to drop Ned, which I am not mentally in a position to probably ever do. But we stick with the team. Griffiths will take four. Moa Beer at five, Hilton six. Look at that. We've got an average of 38. That's a great comeback from Samaru. Louis with 36. Griffiths with 39. Just look at Samaru go. He was so poor to start with. Strike rate through the roof. Uh, but not great. And then an average of 44 and an average of 39. Meaningful amount of matches each season as well. Three centuries last year. But he's really turned this around. His three centuries seem a bit ago. But the consistency in his game... From getting these, well, he's not getting out early a lot anymore. But also these middling scores are being turned to 50s. Huge average against Zimbabwe and England, Afghanistan and India. That tells me that we've probably got someone who is a very good player. He's only struggled against Sri Lanka and New Zealand. Averaging over 40 in India, England and the West Indies. Average is 36 away, 40 at home. And look at his average over time. It was in the doldrums. After 10 innings, he was averaging 20. Fast forward to 20 innings, he's averaging 36. This is such a roll for us. Look at this. 2022, four wins. 2023, or 33, get it right, and uh, 32, 50% wins. Okay, we get through him easy. 124 all out, four three and three. Anderson, Thorne and Gamroop in 46 overs. Rain is around. It's a lead, it's a minor one. We're bowled out for 199. It's all happening fast in this game. We only bat 72 overs. We're slow. All right, 72 overs. But Belgrave, 87, leads the way. Uh, Burns got into us a little bit. Off spinner, what is your record? 89 wickets at 38. You've had a good day against us. And it's going to be 122 to win. They get 196. About 81 overs for that. Thorne picks up five. We had great control from Ned. He bowled 22 overs out of the 81. People will love to see that in the chat. You don't bowl your spinners enough. No, I don't. But this was a time to do it. Great control. Even though they frustrated us with how long they batted, we're surely favourites to knock off 122 on this pitch. And we do. It's an eight-wicket victory. Samaru, eight. 58. <laughs> I'm adding runs to your score. Hey, you scored a one day century there. Um, looking good. That's frustrating. 294. We were 175 for none, but we lost the last six wickets for 14 runs. Harris runs through as Solomon, uh, Gamroop, Thorne, Anderson, Ned leaves. Griffiths not out on 39. Louis scores his first 100 in God knows how long. And another 90 for the Samaru Soldier. Moves up to almost a 40 average. Okay, they've got a 46 run lead. We are behind the game. They bat really well here. Big partnerships. 100 partnership by Doherty and Macbeth. 66 here. A 76 there. Just does enough to frustrate us throughout. We're going to fluff the series, aren't we? 210 to win. 
Louis with 92, Moa Beer with 61, but the usual, Harris picking up a five, running through us. The pitch, well, it's uneven and turning, and predictor, twice 50-50 to more towards them. Oh, deadly Ned does it again, four for 38, we bowl them out for 171, it was tight. They even had, it was a partnership at nine, but it went on quite a few overs. Um, we just picked up wickets throughout. This was a good performance. It's another series win, which I am all about. 70 points. We're nearing Sri Lanka now. I know we're still in 10th, but nearing Sri Lanka. Number one and number two in the world with the ball. And Samaru is probably just a few runs from scoring more centuries and being in the top 10 in the world with the bat. Something I never thought would happen. Louis average 50, 57, Samaru 53, Belgrave 37, so top three great. Everyone else, a little bit disappointing, but we're going to give them the benefit of the doubt because we are a decent looking team. Ned, seven wickets at 15, 10 at 17 for Anderson, Thorne comes back strong, Gamroop slightly expensive. And now the test, can we beat England at home on our decks? England team ranked fifth in the world. They're just they're just not what they used to be. Ryan Ahmed's ranked number three with the ball, though. That's dangerous. Malik and Halstead all in the top ten. We gave them hell. Well, actually, we didn't really give them hell. We we had a good performance against them earlier. Three two. I'm actually taking this. It's almost like a victory for us. Two test matches at home. We've got our seeming wicked in place. This is the best of the West Indies that we've seen. A five and five record last year. We're two and zero oh this year. But actually. And this is going under the radar. They're not the hardest teams in the world. So we won two series. We lost to India and Australia without disgrace in ourselves. Beat Sri Lanka. Almost drew with England and beat Ireland. This is the best we've been. The results are very good. Can we go do it in a, a clash? This could have huge implications to the world ratings. Remember, we started this episode on 60 points. We're up to 70 now. We could find ourselves back in eighth, all doing it uh, with three players averaging in the 20s. This is going to be hard. They're five stars. They're bowling attack. Let's have a little look. The batting, oh, Norris is averaging 68, opening the bat to go with Bates, who averages 40. So they've got one, two, three, four, five, six players averaging above uh, 40, seven averaging more than 37, and we've got two averaging more than 37. That's a performance. This is a batting deck, and we bowl them for 200. Anderson with four, Gamroot three, Ned three for 31, Misley with a 1.82 economy rate. And this was the usual England where they have partnerships, but we managed to break them. Nine run lead. We were never going to score 200. Uh, we were three down for 23 early doors. Decent runs here from the middle order with no one going on to score 50 to give us some sort of opportunity here on a deck that's starting to get uneven. Again, that's a wonderful performance. 186 all out. And it looked like they were going. They had Wales and Malik, these amazing players on the game going. Thorne got through them. He gets two for 79, but two huge wickets. We need 196 to win on this deck. Day three, session one. It's sunny. And we still aren't favourites. We need 47 to win. Six wickets remaining going into the start of day four. The pitch is offering a bit of turn, which is not good for us with an old ball. Mohabir, Hilton, Solomon, stand up, be legends. We have beat England at home. Hilton, 31, not out. Mohabir went 29, sure. Uh, Belgrave scored a 64. He had a very good game for us to go with his duck. Well, well done. Uh, but the fact is, in a low-scoring contest, we beat England implications in the test rankings could be huge let's win a series at home versus England we go unchanged it's a still the same sort of wicket what a knock 327 it's not a huge score but it's good for us because Moabir 102 off 137 it's taken 11 games but he's broke the back of it a first test match century in a massive contest Runs after being 4 for 74 from Hilton, from Solomon, the world all round and number 6 in the world. Gamroop scoring 30 odd with his 14 batting average, getting it done. We've, we've got a score. And if you really want to say about it, we've got a wicket second ball. And if we really want to make a song and dance about it, we've got the option to enforce the follow on because we've bowled them out for 127. We've only got three pace bowlers and they're all knackered, so I won't enforce a follow on. 
But Gamroot goes big. When he goes big, he goes big hard. Mike, if I was monetized, I might get demonetized for that. Um, Thorn with two, Anderson with three. But again, just bang, bang, bang all the way through. We're giving ourselves a chance. Immortality, a win at home versus England. It's been years on the save. This is incredible. Honestly, this episode changes everything about our expectations going forward. Hilton's just scored 160 off 185. Must win contest. We are struggling. We're 5 for 129. They might only have to chase 300. And Hilton, 160 off 185. 86 strike rate. Scores uh, not a career best, but a wonderful fifth test match century. Takes his average up to 31. Still questions about that. Don't forget about Gamroop's 27 or Ned's 32 and their 72-run partnership at the bottom. They need 5-5-4 to win on an uneven pitch. That is turning. Surely we've got to win the series. The future's bright. The future is West Indies. We've beat them. We've trounced them at home by 360 runs. They had moments where they were looking like there might be stability with Darcy and Wales, but we kept Picking away. Ned with four. Anderson wonderful with five. Hilton takes man of the match. Moa Beer scores his first ever test match century. We end the series. Two players averaging in the 30s. Darcy and Wales from England. From West Indies. Hilton averaged 128. Gamroot 44 all round at number one. Moa Beer averaging 43 is a big move. Uh, we didn't get much else. But in a low scoring series. That's okay. Anderson 15 at 10. Groundbreaking. Ned, 9 at 9. Groundbreaking. Thorn, not sure what you're doing. Gamroot, brilliant. World rankings. Oh, my days were 8th. Stop the press. We are going to finish the season 8th in the world. That's back where we started. We started on 80 points. We're back finally to 75. Samaru will finish in 39th on the year. Ned and Anderson, a 1-2 in the world rankings. And Gamroot... We've got to clean off all number ones. We've already done the bowlers. But there is a real outside chance that one day, some way, somehow, Gerard Ramroop, I call him Gamroop for some reason, ends the number one all-rounder in the world. It's a massive episode for us. By far the best one we've had. The Test Championship looks meaningful and something we need to pay attention to for the first time. Ladies and gentlemen, 10 seasons, the West Indies are finally starting to arrive.